everybody. My name is Tanisha, also known as Craft Tea of Craft Tea Creations, LLC. And I'm here this evening to demonstrate very briefly uh, a couple of ideas that I use when I make my tobacco rolling trays. Uh, I also will show you how I pour my epoxy. Um, I use Aluminite is the brand that I utilize. So we are going to learn how to do a tray using a sticker, which we will, uh, I will show you how I make these. We will do a tray using decals. And of course, I'm gonna show you that. And then we will use a tray doing the uh, full coverage or all over method. And I will also show you how I do the epoxy. Uh, so what we're going to need are, first of all, one of the metal rolling trays, which I get mine from Dollar Tree. These are considered the nickel plated trays. They come in this rectangular shape or this oval shape. Uh, I might do something on the oval shape too, just so you can see how I do it, but it is absolutely no different from the squares as far as the application process. Um, I do use Aluminite, uh, their clear cast or the amazing cast. Um, I use plastic cups. I prefer the ones that are see-through for measuring. I use large craft sticks or popsicle sticks. I use matte sticker paper, and I also use a gloss sticker paper. And uh, that's pretty much the supplies in a nutshell. Of course, you'll need a pair of scissors and a marker. Uh, and your spray acrylic is what I use on the edges of my tray. So gathering those items, most importantly, this tray, and I'll show you how I put these together. So this is the method that I use for painting my trays. As you can see, I just kind of go along the edges. I don't really do the middle too much. Did a little bit of overspray on this one. You can see the drips, but for demonstration purposes, this is how it gets done. Okay, now after you have painted your tray, as I just demonstrated, uh, I'm going to find a graphic on my laptop and I actually have some already printed out, but essentially what I do is take a picture uh, or a piece of clip art and, and print it out is how I do it. Now there is this matte sticker paper, and as you can see, this is actually a sticker. This peels apart comes in a full sheet, eight and a half by 11, goes right through your inkjet or your laser printer. I have an inkjet printer. Now this is a matte sheet in eight and a half by 11. I haven't found that any particular brand is any better than any other brand. Uh, just the matte paper doesn't seem to matter what brand for me. Uh, there's also a uh, glossy photo paper. Now, uh, or print a sticker paper. I like the glossy paper. It makes the colors pop a little bit more. Let me see if I can peel this really quick. Uh, and you can see that this is actually two parts. Uh, it's a white sheet and it's sticky on one side. It's basically a large eight and a half by 11 sticker that you're gonna run right through your printer, okay? So you have the glossy, and then you have a matte. And matte with epoxy is fine. I just find that with the glossy paper, my colors on my graphics and my artwork really pop and shine a lot better than with the matte. Um, on some trays, it doesn't matter. When you're doing a photo tray where you're actually going to take a picture and put it on the tray, I would recommend the glossy so that it, it shines like a real photograph like a real picture now this brand uh, sticker paper is clear now there may be some other brands I haven't explored a whole lot this works for me it is a little pricey you get uh, 10 sheets in here and I want to say it's $12 so you're paying a little over a dollar a sheet but I order for from Amazon and I also use a collage when I when I print so that I can print several at a time. And this is what I use to label my glass jars. It allows you to still see the glass, 
but your graphic is actually applied. This is clear sticker paper. When you pull this apart, the top sheet is actually clear. That's not so much for the trays themselves as it is for the airtight jars if you utilize those in your rolling trays. Now, however you print it out from your printer, you wanna definitely let that ink dry all the way on the sheet uh, before you try to do anything with it. So we're gonna let this dry. Okay, now we have painted our tray and we have printed our sticker and we are going to complete the painted version of a tray with a sticker. This is simply a sticker that I printed on sticker paper and attached to the tray. So with your painted tray, you're gonna cut out this sticker, plain and simple, okay? Now this, uh, there is a way that you can do this on your Cricut cutter and it will cut out uh, the, the actual little logo for you if you use uh, cut and print. But I wanted to offer a tutorial for those that maybe don't have all of the fancy uh, cutting machines and equipment and all of that stuff and might just wanna make a tray for themselves or to give as a gift. This method right here is probably one of the easiest as, as well as the decal method. So I just kind of trim around this sticker, uh, usually very detailed and, and, and very meticulously. I have scissors in a couple of different sizes that allow me to get really tight in little spaces and trim these little things uh, very, very precisely. But essentially folks, this is how you make a sticker. Okay, printed it on the printer paper, cut it out, and now we have a sticker. So this peels apart, and yay for fingernails. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get that apart. Oops, almost had it. Okay, you're going to peel that off just like that, and you're going to stick it onto your tray. Now, I don't know if it can get any easier than that, okay? That is the sticker method, plain and simple. You can make several stickers, you can make a larger sticker, that's it in a nutshell. Now listen, actually, the decal method is really this very same thing. Instead of applying this sticker that you printed and cut on your own, you would simply take a decal, and I prefer decals to stickers when I purchase them in the store because they tend to have a clear, a clear background. So it doesn't, it doesn't show any white or anything on the edges. Now these are some pride stickers I had for another fun tray that I made for pride month this month, but the decals do the same thing as the sticker. You will take your painted tray, you will take your decal and peel it off just the same as your sticker. That is if you can get it off the paper, okay? And you would stick it, stick this on your trays just okay, now you see this is on a white tray. I have found with my decals, with decals, or if you use the clear sticker paper, it doesn't work on a black tray. It doesn't work on a dark tray. This clear sticker paper and these decals, the clear decals that you buy in your craft stores, your Michaels, your Hobby Lobbies, I have found don't show up very well unless your tray is white or very, very light. So this is how you apply your sticker or your decal. Now, of course, we wouldn't make a tray with 
with that like that. But this is just showing you, you're gonna, you're gonna cut your sticker out of your sticker paper after you print, you just use your clip art and SVG file, you print it on your sticker paper and you cut it out. That's what I did. Now I could have cut out each one of these individual letters and placed them on as well. I wasn't gonna do all that for the sake of demonstration. But cut it out of your, print it on your printer, cut it out of your sticker paper, slap it on a tray. Or purchase your decals at your local craft store, slap it on a painted tray. I'm gonna show you how to epoxy these eventually, but this is sticker method decal. Printed stickers, purchased decal. This is another very large sticker that I printed for a tray that you could cut out, put right in the middle. Uh, this peels right off, you can see this here. And you could apply this after cutting it out right to the tray. Uh, I would use a red tray, a blue tray, a red tray, a black tray, a gold tray, a white tray for this sticker. Any of those would work just fine uh, for that. Here is a similar tray with this sticker method with the epoxy on it that I just cut out and applied. Okay, now I've shown you how to do a sticker tray. We cut our sticker out. I'll show you how to do a decal tray. You just slap a decal on. We'll do the epoxy later. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a tray like this. Now this is a picture that I also printed out using sticker paper and photo paper. Same, same, or sticker glossy paper, not photo paper, I apologize. And, and just simply print these out. Now, let me show you this. This is a printout, okay, that that just ran through my printer, okay? This is this regular matte sticker paper, all right? Now, you have your painted tray. You take your tray. When I paint it, I paint where I need to paint. I don't paint all of this if I'm going to use this method because it's mostly going to be covered. The paint smells, it stinks. Why spray more than you have to? I paint just a little bit. Now these trays, you can probably tell, I've used these over and over again. Uh, for the sake of tutorial and demonstration, I try not to use all of my good stuff up uh, because these trays are really hot commodities and sometimes a little hard to come by. But let me show you what I came up with for these trays. Uh, and maybe someone else does something similar, but this is what works for me. If you don't have a Cricut, uh, you don't have the cutting machines and all of the stuff needed. If you have a basic printer, we, we can make these trays. So you're going to take a piece of either the glossy or the matte photo paper. I mean, sticker paper. I've got to quit saying that. Sticker paper. Sticker paper. Okay, and I'm going to print right from my printer, like I just showed you, a drawing, okay? Any drawing. This is a six by nine tray, okay? I'm gonna take this drawing, and based on how I want this to look on this tray, I have created a template that comes in either corrugated plastic or acrylic that measures this tray precisely, okay? If you cut your sticker or your picture or your graphic or whatever this size, it will fit precisely into this tray and look like this. And then just your edges show what you can paint. I prefer to paint mine ahead of time. I know some folks do the edges after, I always ruin the picture when I do that. I don't. I paint first. I paint first. So using one of these templates, uh, and I, I will offer these on my website, uh, but this is what I do, okay? I take my template, I center it on the graphic depending on how I want this laid on my tray, okay? So I'm gonna put this graphic on a purple tray. And you can see there's a few flaws in this 
I don't care. This is just for demonstration. So I'm going to determine what part of this graphic I want on the tray. I might shrink it down and print it smaller. Um, but this here gets me the coverage I need when I have a full, a full picture. Okay, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to center which parts of my graphic I want on the tray. I like to use a metallic marker because for some reason it shows a little better. I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's another kind that would work. Uh, but this is how I'm going to line up my graphic. I'm going to trace it just like this with my metallic marker. The only reason why I use metallic is because it shows up over color. Shows up over color and makes it real easy for me to see. So I'm going to trace it just like that. And once again to my scissors, I'm going to cut this out. So you're going to cut it just, just the shape and I just go fo follow right on the lines. And I haven't been disappointed yet. Um, like I said, I will list that little piece of plastic if you find you want, want one to help with your trays. Uh, I'd be more than happy to, to ship one out to you. Um, it comes in acrylic. This is acrylic, like epoxy. No breaking this one or it comes in the corrugated plastic, which you probably won't get to keep as long, but I think it does the trick just fine. As you can see, that's what I just used to trace this. And after cutting this out, it's gonna be in the precise shape of the tray. And yes, I'm moving a little quickly. This should be so much neater and precise and perfect, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm only speed it up a little bit. I do keep scissors in varying sizes. Sometimes I need little tiny clips or uh, cut big pages, whatever. It helps if you have a variety of cutting utensils. But now that I have cut this out, okay, I'm going to peel it off of my sticker paper. And if y'all notice, I don't have my nails on like I usually do. I'm sure missing them. But it's kind of good right now because I'd have never got this sticker paper peeled off of here with those artificial nails on. You peel this off. There we go. Okay. Now one thing I do know, this, this is sticky as all get out. It helps me if I center it by folding in the middle. Okay. I kind of find the center where this needs to go. And I push from the center so that I don't get bubbles. Okay, I'm going to smooth outward. Outward, 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 outward. Sometimes I use the little squeegees and I make sure I'm pushed all the way up in. Because let me tell you this, one thing very, very, very important. That's off center a little bit. You see this is a little higher there. Should come down just a little bit. You have got to seal this sticker to the tray. If there are any spaces in here where epoxy can seep, it's going to ruin your tray. If epoxy gets under this sticker, your tray looks like trash, okay? You can see the bleeding underneath and it looks like it's been wet or, or damaged some type of way. It does not look good at all. I wish I had one that I'd ruined to show you, uh, but I tend to take them apart and start over. So you make sure that you have pressed this all the way around the edges, okay? And there's your tray, okay? You use your sticker paper, you print it out, you use a template, you cut it out, you slap it on your painted tray. And then I'm gonna show you how to do epoxy. I'm gonna demonstrate this one more time on another tray. Okay, this is a matte. This is matte. This is not the glossy. This is matte. You can tell this is a glossier paper. You can see how much more shiny it is. Plus, it has the epoxy on it. But this is a matte sticker paper. 
Now this one is glossy. One of these is clear. Let me make sure I'm using the right one. This is glossy and we're going to do the same thing, okay? I'm gonna use my template. I'm gonna figure out what of this tray I want. I'm gonna cut it out and then I'm going to apply it, okay? So let me trace this. And of course, I'm reusing this tray too. This is what we just had our cheese sticker on. Uh, I took it off so I could demonstrate this sticker. We have used glossy sticker paper and I cartooned this picture. You can see that's a cartoon. I did the same thing on this one, uh, the tray I, I did for my brother. This is a picture. I removed the background and I cart cartooned it using, uh, I gotta look up that app. It's an app that I utilize uh, and it turns pictures into cartoons. I love it. But we're gonna cut this out and apply this to the tray. And then I'm gonna show you how to do your epoxy. Okay, we've applied that sticker. We wanna make sure it's down flush. Okay, now some folks, depending on the way this looks, you might wanna go back and and add orange and yellow or blue or additional colors uh, to make this blend a little nicer. Uh, I have found that lighter color paint, and the paint that I use is that Rust-Oleum Paint Plus Primer. I have to use primer prior to painting these. A little primer, light paint, um, and your sticker paper seems to work best for me. If I'm gonna use a, a darker paint, then I don't have to use the primer. I can just paint right on the tray. But I find these lighter colors like your white, uh, like this yellow, um, 
the glitter. You will have to do primer prior to painting these. Okay, so now that we've applied a couple of stickers, uh, either ones that we have made, ones that we have just printed, or ones that we have purchased, I'm gonna show you how to do the epoxy on these trays. Okay guys, I'm gonna put the epoxy on my trays, okay? So let me reiterate. I've shown you how to basically stick a, stick a decal on a tray, okay? That's plain and simple. Paint the tray, stick a decal on, okay? Same thing here, make a sticker, paint the tray, stick it on. That's what we've done here with these two. We made a sticker out of our adhesive paper. We painted the tray, we stuck it on. Now we need to coat with epoxy because that's what makes the rolling surface smooth and that's what makes this tray really usable and protects this surface, okay? So we're gonna make a tray that ends up looking very similar to this. You can see that wonderful shiny epoxy coating on there, it's solid. I hear you could put them in the dishwasher. I can't imagine why you would do that, but we're gonna pour the epoxy. Now, one thing I swear by, you guys, I have tried several different types of epoxy. Um, I have started doing dominoes and other resin casts. I have uh, been doing these trays for, for a while now. What works for me is this Aluminite brand epoxy. It's, it's really simple to use. I don't get a lot of bubbles. I don't have to do a whole lot of fussing and craziness uh, in order to get my trays done. I've used other brands. They didn't set. My trays were soft. You know, the mixture was off. The temperature's got to be precise. This clear cast, and I think there's another one called easy cast. <coughs> Excuse me. Very, very, very easy to use. Also, if you order from Illuminite and you use the code CRAFT T15, C R A F T T15, you'll get 15% off of your order. I use Illuminite on everything, swear by it. So, you're going to mix your epoxy. For those of you who have never done so, epoxy comes in two parts you have your A side and you have your B side. One is um, a hardener, and one is like the resin itself. You need equal parts of each. My recommendation, clear plastic cups with markings on them. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies are a mess. These come in all different sizes. These are good for the trays. Sometimes I need a larger size and I just have to govern myself accordingly. I have also used these clear cups from Dollar Tree uh, and I measure, depending on how many trays I'm doing, when I measure up to this first line and then match it with part A, part B, I mix them together, that covers two trays. It's approximately two ounces, one ounce of resin, one ounce of hardener to complete one tray. These are little one ounce or 30 milliliter, 30 cc medicine cups. So you're going to take your A side, and you're going to mix it. Now I am buy I buy epoxy um, now by by the gallon. Uh, this little bottle is strictly for demonstration purposes because mine comes in a trough. I use so much. That's 30 cc's of the A side, and it tells you right on the bottle. The directions on it are really clear and concise. This is really easy stuff, y'all. And epoxy is scary for a lot of people and it's hard. But doing it this way will, will eliminate a, a lot of problems. But the one thing you have to do is make sure your ratios are, are pretty close to exact. Exact, I guess I should say exact. 30 cc's of one, you need 30 cc's of the other. If you use five ounces of one, then you need to use five ounces of the other. If you are off in your, in your measurements, then your epoxy doesn't set and your tray can be soft or it doesn't ever get 
you know, formed properly and, and it does no good. Can't use a tray without the epoxy. This is where my large craft stick comes in. I'm gonna pour this right into the cup and I wanna make sure I get all of it out of there. Now really I'm supposed to have on some gloves. To be quite honest, I've used gloves so much for so many other things during this coronavirus. Uh, I'm a little stingy with my gloves right now. Uh, and I am using my bare hands because the other cheap gloves I have don't fit and I can't function with them. So, using my bare hands. I'm sure there's some kind of rule about that, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. So, there's our epoxy and we're gonna mix it. One thing I have found, I just take my time and stir it, and stir it, and stir it. Now, when you start whipping this really fast, like you're a mixing machine, that's how you get bubbles. Stirring it slowly helps to prevent bubbles. And I have a method that I use that I'm gonna show you that's probably a little bit silly, but it works for me to get all the bubbles out of my epoxy. You have to make sure this is very, very, very well blended. Very well blended. And it takes, in my opinion, I like to let it dry a full 24 hours before I do anything with it. I don't want to ship it. I don't want to do anything. But you mix it, okay? You see there, it's just clear epoxy. You can see it's kind of thick in there, the two together, okay? And then I simply pour it on my tray. I go along the edges first. Okay, and then just fill it in. That's what I do. And I wanna make sure I get all of it out of there. Use it all. That is a total of two ounces and it covers one of these Dollar Tree trays. Two ounces, that's one ounce of part A and one ounce of part B uh, will cover a tray, okay? Now I just take mine and kind of smooth it out. This is another reason why you want to make sure that your uh, ink is dry because if your ink isn't dry, this epoxy is just gonna smear all over the place. Uh, this runs and I just make sure everything is covered. This is self-leveling. You make sure it's on a flat, even surface and you don't have anything to worry about. Okay, you see how that just kind of leveled out? This Illuminite um, Amazing Cast is so easy to use, okay? You see that? That tray is essentially done. Now, let me show you this. This is probably gonna sound really crazy. There's some tiny little bubbles in there. Okay, I just slide it around a little bit, make sure everything's covered. There's some tiny little bubbles in there and what I have found that works is if I take my tray and drop it a couple of times on a hard surface, I usually do this on the ground, not only do my bubbles pop, but it levels my epoxy. Uh, I prefer to do it on my concrete floor down here in my workshop. I don't know scientifically why that happens. I don't know any of that. I just know when I drop my tray, like that, onto concrete, the bubbles pop and it levels. And that's what I do. So this is pretty much how we do our tray, okay? So you've got your tray with your sticker. You're gonna mix your epoxy, one part of the A side and one part of the B side, the hardener one to one ratio. You pour it into your tray that you have prepared with your sticker and paint, and you let it dry for 24 hours. And then you end up with this. As you can see, it's the same method. It's very precisely fitting, very neat, very put together. You can use any picture you want. Uh, this is the matte paper. You can see with the epoxy, it still shines. Doesn't really matter. 
it makes the colors when you print it pop more when you use a glossy paper. This is a glossy paper, no epoxy. We still need to put epoxy on this one. Okay, now once I have completed the epoxy on my trays, because the epoxy is pretty much in the middle of the tray, that's when I take my Rust-Oleum glaze or the Rust-Oleum gloss and I spray just the edges so they have the same shine and pop that the rest of the tray has here that has the epoxy on it. So I just take a little of this And of course you're gonna use a mask and proper ventilation. And I just spray my edges just like this. And I let it dry, just like that. That's gonna end up just as shiny um, as, the, as, as the rest of the tray. And you let this dry. Now I put mine in front of a fan for a little bit. Uh, it smells to high heavens and I have it ventilated and everything in the other room there. That's where I set my trays to let them dry. I don't spray, I do not spray that epoxy, this glaze or the clear coat until that epoxy has dried, okay? That has to dry before you put that glaze on because when the glaze mixes with this epoxy, it makes a, a cloudy film and your tray will look horrible. Do not put this glaze or this clear coat on this tray until this epoxy dries. This is the very last thing you do prior to your tray uh, being complete. Epoxy first, glaze or spray acrylic last. Okay, folks, so let me do a quick recap on, on what it is that we did, okay? We did a tray using something similar to the all-over method with adhesive paper or sticker paper. This is matte sticker paper. I purchased mine from Amazon. Or you can get glossy, you see that shine? Glossy sticker paper I also purchased from Amazon. Or you can get clear sticker paper. This is the brand I have stuck with. I like the texture. I like the transparency. That's what I've used. I don't know much about them, but it works for me and I'm sticking with it. So you got your matte paper, your gloss paper, or your clear paper. All adhesive. You run them through your printer. You print your design. Or you can use a decal which is essentially a sticker printed on, on clear paper. You just buy it that way instead of printing your own. So if you don't have access to a printer, you can always buy decals, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, all of those places, Walmart, everybody has decals. The stuff you stick on your walls for murals and those things, those are decals. They work wonderfully on the tray if you don't have the ability to print, okay? So you print it out, you cut it out. Print it out and cut it out. Either the logo itself, cut it out, apply it to the tray, or you use more of the all over method and you use the template uh, that we are gonna put on the website. Comes in the corrugated plastic, that's two bucks. Or you can get the acrylic one that's gonna last forever for four bucks, okay? We have both of those. I think they're easy. I have a Cricut and I still use my templates when I have a picture to print out. I can't always get my measurements just right. It cuts it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not very good with the machine, but this template makes it easy. Print it out, trace it, cut it, done. After you've applied your sticker to your tray, just like so, you are going to use your epoxy. I use Illuminite, swear by it. I don't use anything else. You're gonna mix your epoxy in your measured 
cup so that you are precise, one to one ratio. You pour it on your tray and then you are going to let it dry. And the finished result is, okay, and after you pour your epoxy with your, with your sticker, this is what you get. And then you coat with your clear coat or your Rust-Oleum um, glaze, and this is what you come up with. This has got the epoxy on it. This one's not quite dry yet, but this is the one we just did. This one here still needs to be done. So we're using, for painting, I like the Rust-Oleum Two Times brand. It's got paint and primer. That's what I use on my trays. If the paint is a very, very light color, then I use the two times primer first, and then I use the paint and primer. I have found on the lighter colors, your whites, your pinks, any of the glitter paint that comes in the two times brand, I must use primer or the paint does not stick to these metal trays, okay? Rust-Oleum two times brand ultra cover. I don't use anything else. I just, this is just what works for me and I'm not switching because it, it causes, it, it just causes mistakes when I do that. Uh, so you got your paint. I use the metal trays from, the nickel plated metal trays from Dollar Tree. Whoops. The nickel metal trays from Dollar Tree, they come in the round shape or oval shape or they come in the rectangular shape. And that, my friends, in a nutshell, is how you put together a rolling tray, okay? We've demonstrated all over, cut out stickers, and the decal method. Okay, so that is how I put together my metal rolling trays. Now, I am diligently seeking some other ways uh, to complete these trays and other ways that are easier. I know a lot of people don't like the epoxy. I've tried lacquer spray. I have tried the clear Plasti Dip spray. I have tried the gloss. Nothing works on my trays like epoxy. Nothing. Nothing works the same. I've tried so many things. I've tried to improvise. I've tried to cut corners. It doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. I swear by the Rust-Oleum two times primer and I swear by Illuminite. That, that, those are two things that I hold fast. I might use a different tray. I might use a, uh, I don't know, a, a different sticker paper. Any of that could change. These two things are constant. The two times Rust-Oleum and the Illuminite. That I can tell you for sure. Uh, and the sticker paper brand that I have been utilizing, that Neato brand, seems to be the best uh, for the sticker, for the clear sticker paper. Otherwise, any brand worked just fine. So that's it in a nutshell, y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Again, the name is Tanisha, also known as Craft T of Craft T Creations, LLC. You can check me out on Instagram or Twitter, Craft T of KC right here on YouTube or on Facebook, Crafty Creates. Uh, check out my website. We're gonna be offering this template, uh, the little corrugated plastic one, if you guys wanna have it, two bucks. The acrylic one lasts forever. It's solid plastic acrylic. That one's four. www.crafttcreations.com. Also, if you all decide to use the Illuminite um, epoxy, if you order uh, from their website, please use the code C R A F T T Craft T 15 Craft T 15 and you can get 15% off of your order. Thank you so much for joining me today and happy crafting. Ah.